We're at Lambs Knoll, uh, about 1,758 feet above sea level. It is the highest point in uh, Maryland, in this part of Maryland, Washington and Frederick County, south of Route 70. And so really what we're doing here is sitting at the elevation probably that the owls migrate at so that as they're flying by they hear our lure and we come over and catch them. We grew from a bunch of passionate people in the mid-80s running about 10 stations to now there's over 110 places that target migrant sawwits every autumn when they come south. But, you know, this is their thing. This is what they get out and do. You know, they're passionate about this cute little owl and in the meantime we're collecting data that we can use to better understand its biology, better understand its migration behavior and potentially answer conservation questions like how's the population doing? You know, is it doing well or is it in trouble? So if you hear kind of a whine and you know because we're being quiet you can detect it. That's one of these solids out in the woods. It's talking to this lure. Pretty laid back for a, a wild animal. Okay, first I bring it back. I'll put it in a little can to immobilize it and weigh it. Um, while it's in there, I'll measure its tail, uh, put the band on its leg. The band has a serial number on um, that identifies this bird should another uh, owl bander find it somewhere or in the unfortunate incidents where you know one's picked up dead along a roadside or something. Uh, but that can help us learn about their movements. Uh, then I'll measure its wing and using that combination of its weight and its wing measurement we can uh, usually determine the sex of the owl. Uh, after that I'll take some other measurements, I'll look at the eye color, um, I'll measure the bill and I'll look at the body condition uh, blowing under the looking out the door feathers uh, in, basically in the wing pit and blow the feathers apart and I can look at that underneath the skin it's fairly translucent you can see fat deposits under the skin. Now this bird actually has absolutely no fat under its skin. She's the one that we ever seen a This is the one that Dave took out. It's actually fairly thin, very sharp kill. It actually has air underneath its skin and little air pockets. So she's been flying a lot the last couple days, probably. Okay, here's another bird. It's beyond a hatch air bird. And what I'm looking at here is the pattern of the old and new feathers in the wing. The old feathers are faded and lighter, the new feathers grow out nice and dark. And when we have a pattern like this where we have a block of old feathers in the middle, new feathers on the outer end of the wing and on the inner side of the wing, that's thought to be a second year pattern. That means this bird hatched last year. Uh, sometimes the, the pattern, because this is a woodland bird, um, sometimes in very deep dark forest, feathers don't fade as much as we'd like them to. So we'll look at them under a black light and it really makes the molt pattern stand out. We have these dark uh, raspberry colored feathers here, they're fluorescing um, under the black light and those are the new feathers, the pigment and feathers. You can't see it with the naked eye but it does fluoresce and it degrades in sunlight rather rapidly. After we band them we uh, release them, send them on their way and uh, hope that uh, another bander in my, you know, finds them on their migration. Everybody ready? <laughs>